Moya Moya Disease, Wikipedia Article Audio Moya Moya Disease is a disease in which certain arteries in the brain are constricted. Blood flow is blocked by the constriction, and also by blood clots. Cause Pathophysiology Diagnosis Associated Biomarkers Treatment Prognosis Research A collateral circulation develops around the blocked vessels to compensate for the blockage, but the collateral vessels are small, weak, and prone to bleeding, aneurysm and thrombosis. On conventional X-ray angiography, these collateral vessels have the appearance of a puff of smoke in Japanese. When moya moya is diagnosed by itself, with no underlying correlational conditions, it is diagnosed as moya moya disease. This is also the case when the arterial constriction and collateral circulation are bilateral. Moya Moya syndrome is unilateral arterial constriction, or occurs when one of the several specified conditions is also present. This may also be considered as Moya Moya being secondary to the primary condition. Mainly, occlusion of the distal internal carotid artery occurs. On angiography, a puff of smoke appearance is seen, and the treatment of choice is surgical bypass. About 10% of cases of Moya Moya disease are familial, and some cases result from specific genetic mutations. Susceptibility to Moya Moya disease 2 is caused by variation in the RNF213 gene on chromosome 17q25. Moya Moya disease 5 is caused by mutation in the ACTA2 gene on chromosome 10q23.3 and Moya Moya disease 6 with achalasia is caused by mutation in the GUCY1A3 gene on chromosome 4Q32. Loci for the disorder have been mapped to chromosome 3P and chromosome 8Q23. See also MYMY4, an X-linked recessive syndromic disorder characterized by Moya Moya disease, short stature, hypergonadotropic hypogonadism, and facial dysmorphism. And linked to Q25.3, on chromosome 17. In Japan the overall incidence is higher. In North America, women in the third or fourth decade of life are most often affected, but the condition may also occur during infancy or childhood. These women frequently experience transient ischemic attacks, cerebral hemorrhage, or may not experience any symptoms at all. They have a higher risk of recurrent stroke and may be experiencing a distinct underlying pathophysiology compared to patients from Japan. Moya Moya disease can be either congenital or acquired. Patients with Down syndrome, sickle cell anemia, Neurofibromatosis type 1, congenital heart disease, fibromuscular dysplasia, activated protein C resistance, or head trauma can develop moya moya malformations. It is more common in women than in men, although about a third of those affected are male. The disease moya moya, which is a Japanese mimetic word, gets its characteristic name due to the appearance of smoke on relevant angiographs resultant from the tangle of tiny vessels in response to stenosis. This makes the blood leak out of the arteries, causing pressure to the brain and subsequent headaches. The pathogenesis of Moya Moya disease is unknown, although the gene ring finger protein 213 has been implicated. Once it begins, the vascular occlusion tends to continue despite any known medical management. In some people this leads to transient ischemic attacks or repeated strokes with severe functional impairment or even death. In others, the blockage may not cause any symptoms. The disease causes constrictions primarily in the internal carotid artery, 
and often extends to the middle and anterior cerebral arteries, branches of the internal carotid artery inside the skull. When the internal carotid artery becomes completely blocked, the fine collateral circulation that it supplies is obliterated. Patients often survive on the collateral circulation from the back of the circle of Willis, arising from the basilar artery. The arterial constrictions in Moya Moya disease are unlike the constrictions in atherosclerosis. In atherosclerosis, the walls of arteries are damaged, leading to the deposition of fat and immune cells, and ultimately the accumulation of immune cells laden with fat. In Moya Moya, the inner layer of the carotid artery proliferates within the arterial lumen. The artery also fills with blood clots, which may cause strokes. Moya Moya disease tends to affect adults in the third to fourth decade of life. In children it tends to cause strokes or seizures. In adults it tends to cause strokes or bleeding. The clinical features are strokes, recurrent transient ischemic attacks, sensorimotor paralysis, convulsions, and slash or migraine-like headaches. Moreover, following a stroke, secondary bleeding may occur. Such bleeding, called hemorrhagic strokes, may also stem from rupture of the weak neovascular vessel walls. The diagnosis of Moya Moya is suggested by CT, MRI, or angiogram results. Contrast-enhanced T1-weighted images are better than flare images for depicting the leptomeningeal IV sign in Moya Moya disease. MRI and MRA should be performed for the diagnosis and follow-up of Moya Moya disease. Diffusion-weighted imaging can also be used for following the clinical course of children with Moya Moya disease, in whom new focal deficits are highly suspicious of new infarcts. Proliferation of smooth muscle cells in the walls of the Moya Moya affected arteries has been found to be representative of the disease. A study of six autopsies of six patients who died from Moya Moya disease lead to the finding that there is evidence that supports the theory that there is a thickening, or proliferation, of the innermost layer of the vessels affected by Moya Moya. These vessels are the ACA, MCA, and ICA. The occlusion of the ICA results in concomitant diminution of the puff of smoke collaterals, as they are supplied by the ICA. Often nuclear medicine studies such as SPECT are used to demonstrate the decreased blood and oxygen supply to areas of the brain involved with Moya Moya disease. Conventional angiography provided the conclusive diagnosis of Moya Moya disease in most cases and should be performed before any surgical considerations. Dr. Darren B. Orbach, MD Ph.D. explains how the disease progresses as well as the role angiography plays in detecting the progression of Moya Moya in a short video. Smith conducted a study that looked into specific biological markers that correlate to Moya Moya disease. Some of the categories of these biomarkers include phenotypes, conditions commonly related to Moya Moya, radiographical markers for the diagnosis of Moya Moya, and proteins as well as cellular changes that occur in cases of Moya Moya. Similar to Moya Moya disease, there are conditions that are closely associated with Moya Moya syndrome. Some of the more common medical conditions that are closely associated with Moya Moya syndrome include trisomy 21, sickle cell disease, and neurofibromatosis type 1. There is also evidence that identifies hyperthyroidism and congenital dwarfing syndromes as two of the more loosely associated syndromes that correlate with the possibility of being diagnosed with Moya Moya disease later in life. There is also research that has shown that certain radiographic biomarkers that lead to the diagnosis of Moya Moya disease have been identified.
the specific radiographic markers are now considered an acceptable key component to Moya Moya disease and have been added to the international classification of diseases. These biomarkers of Moya Moya are stenosis of the distal ICAs up to and including the bifurcation, along with segments of the proximal ACA and MCA. Dilated basal collateral vessels must be present. Some other common findings that have not been added to the classification index of those with Moya Moya disease, which are found using radiography, involve very distinct changes in the vessels of the brain. These changes include newly formed vessels made to compensate for another change noted, ischemia and cerebrovascular reserve, both found on MRI. Functional changes include evidence of ischemia in vessels of the brain. It is important to also note that the radiographic biomarkers, in order to be classified as Moya Moya disease, all findings must be bilateral. If this is not the case and the findings are unilateral, it is diagnosed as Moya Moya syndrome. There are also several protein biomarkers that have been linked to the Moya Moya disease diagnosis. Although the sample size of the studies performed are small due to the rarity of the disease, the findings are indicative of a correlation between the disease and several specific protein biomarkers. Other studies have confirmed the correlation of Moya Moya and adhesion molecule 1 being increased as compared to normal vascular function counterparts. Furthermore, it has been concluded that the localization of inflammatory cells suggests that the inflammation stimulus ITES ELF may be responsible for the proliferation and occlusion in the ICA, ACA, and MCA found in those with Moya Moya disease. There is no cure for this disease. Drugs such as antiplatelet agents are usually given to prevent clots, but surgery is usually recommended. Since Moya Moya tends to affect only the internal carotid artery and nearby sections of the adjacent anterior and middle cerebral arteries, surgeons can direct other arteries such as the external carotid artery or the superficial temporal artery to replace its circulation. The arteries are either sewn directly into the brain circulation, or placed on the surface of the brain to re-establish new circulation after a few weeks. There are many operations that have been developed for the condition, but currently the most favored are the indirect procedures EDAS, EMS, and multiple burr holes and the direct procedure STAMCA. Direct superficial temporal artery to middle cerebral artery bypass is considered the treatment of choice, although its efficacy, particularly for hemorrhagic disease, remains uncertain. Multiple burr holes have been used in frontal and parietal lobes with good neovascularization achieved. The EDAS procedure is a synangiosis procedure that requires dissection of a scalp artery over a course of several centimeters and then making a small temporary opening in the skull directly beneath the artery. The artery is then sutured to a branch of the middle cerebral artery on the surface of the brain and the bone is replaced. In the EMS procedure, the temporalis muscle, which is in the temple region of the forehead, is dissected and through an opening in the skull placed onto the surface of the brain. In the multiple burr holes procedure, multiple small holes are placed in the skull to allow for growth of new vessels into the brain from the scalp. In the STAMCA procedure, the scalp artery is directly sutured to an artery on the surface of the brain. This procedure is also commonly referred to as an ECIC bypass. All of these operations have in common the concept of a blood and oxygen starved brain reaching out to grasp and develop new and more efficient means of bringing blood to the brain and bypassing the areas of blockage. The modified direct anastomosis and encephalomyoarteriosynangiosis play a role in this improvement by increasing cerebral blood flow after the operation.
a significant correlation is found between the postoperative effect and the stages of preoperative angiograms. It is crucial for surgery that the anesthesiologist have experience in managing children being treated for moya moya, as the type of anesthesia they require is very different from the standard anesthetic children get for almost any other type of neurosurgical procedure. Some of the most up-to-date treatments for moya moya are explained by top-rated surgeons at Boston Children's Hospital in Massachusetts in these. The natural history of this disorder is not well known. The long-term outlook for patients with treated moya moya seems to be good. While symptoms may seem to improve almost immediately after the indirect EDAS, EMS, and multiple burr holes surgeries, it will take probably 6-12 months before new vessels can develop to give a sufficient blood supply. With the direct STAMCA surgery, increased blood supply is immediate. Once major stroke or bleeding take place, even with treatment, the patient may be left with permanent loss of function so it is very important to treat this condition promptly. Recent investigations have established that both moya moya disease and arteriovenous fistulas of the lining of the brain, the dura, are associated with dural angiogenesis. These factors may represent a mechanism for ischemia contributing to the formation of dural AVFs. At least one case of simultaneous unilateral moya moya syndrome and ipsilateral dural arteriovenous fistula has been reported at the Barrow Neurological Institute. In this case a 44-year-old man presented with headache, tinnitus, and an intraventricular hemorrhage, as seen on computed tomographic scans. Cerebral angiography showed a right moya moya pattern and an ipsilateral dural AVF fed by branches of the external carotid artery and draining into the transverse sinus. This extremely rare coincidental presentation may have deeper pathogenic implications. Orphanet's disease page on moya moya disease.